It's Glenn Carlson here, and if I was to ask your typical small business owner, how do you create more income? They'll invariably say that they need to do more sales and advertising. They need to talk to more people. They need to go networking more. They need to somehow get more leads so they can sit in front of more prospects and do more sales and marketing. They think what I used to think, which is that income follows sales and marketing. As a result of this wrong thinking, a lot of their time and energy goes into hunting and chasing new business, which is one of the reasons why they end up in the struggle zone. The reality is income follows assets. This short sentence revolutionized our business. It allowed us to transform our small and struggling events company in London into a fast growth global business in less than four years. And it's created triple digit growth for hundreds of our clients around the world. But let's use real estate as an example that everybody understands to explore this idea that income does in fact follow assets. So real estate is a business and one of the types of income is rental income. In order to get rental income, first, you need the asset, the house. So if you think about a one-bedroom house, let's say it rents for a 1000 bucks a month. If I hired Ogilvy to run full-page ads in the major newspapers and had the best sales team on earth, we still couldn't rent that one-bedroom house for much more than the 1000 bucks it's worth. Maybe you could get a one-bedroom $1,000 a month house up to $1,100, maybe $1,200 a month, but probably not much more than that. And if you look at the expense of the sales and the marketing you did, the additional yield you get on that rental is incredibly inefficient. Even if you don't hire Ogilvy, you might spend 10 grand to get an extra $200 a month in rental, but even that's unlikely to last as the people renting it will eventually feel ripped off. What if instead you spend the money renovating the property? So we make it a two or a three bedroom house. We do a nice kitchen, we do a nice bathroom. Then the rent automatically on a two or a three bedroom house could easily be two or $3,000 a month. Then if we just took out basic classified ads and did it all up ourselves, no professional salespeople, we'd still get double or triple what Ogilvy could get. To use this analogy, most people are caught in the struggle zone of business because they've only built a one-bedroom house, which only produces a certain amount of income. Rather than escaping the struggle zone by developing the assets and making a more valuable house, they're out there trying to rent the same one bedroom in a highly competitive marketplace for a lot more money through brute force sales and advertising. It's exhausting. They're out hunting and chasing new business, networking, having coffees, all sorts of people in order to try to make more income. This is what we did when we built our first business. We generated millions in sales, but from a profit or valuation perspective, just wasn't successful. Then someone with a background in merchant banking and fund management explained that, here it is again, income follows assets. It means that in order to create more income or profit, we first needed to build more assets within the business. So what is an asset? Well, an asset is anything that passes the Tahiti test, which means it would still be valuable if the founder was sitting on a beach in Tahiti. To cut a long story short, we started developing five of the most valuable assets a business could have. We developed a pitching asset, which meant that our team and clients could pitch our business on our behalf, whether we were actively promoting ourselves or not. Daniel Priestley, my business partner, has written books, which are marketing assets, which have allowed our business to grow in four countries, regardless of where he is in the world. We began turning our service-based business into product-driven businesses with product assets, meaning the business relies far less on any of the founders' personal time. We began turning our profile into an asset which attracts global opportunities 24-7, and we established formal joint ventures and partnerships all around the world, which is another form of long-term asset, which automatically generates up to 90% of our global revenues. If my business partner and I, Dan, went on holiday or, heaven heaven forbid, got hit by a bus, all of these assets would continue to produce 
great value. The business would still expand. Our clients would continue to get remarkable results, which is why our business has been able to attract numerous investors to help us begin to innovate at a whole new level again. So over the long term, it's really tough to market a poor asset. Conversely, it just gets easier and easier to market a great asset. This demonstrates the difference between profit and loss thinking and balance sheet thinking. If you're interested, we can have a bit of a chat with you about the type of assets our clients have produced and what that could look like from your perspective following the same formula we did. The point is, is that anything that would still be highly valuable if you weren't there, that's an asset. The real question is, how do you develop income producing assets within the business? Well, the first thing to realize is that most businesses are built around a skill based service provider, usually the founder. Now, while the founder produces great value, they're not considered an asset on the balance sheet because if they stop working, the business stops working. The second thing to do is to work out what is the most valuable intellectual property that will create the greatest level of differentiation in the marketplace. The third thing is to productize that intellectual property into operational assets around one of the five P's as quickly as possible. The point is that in order to make more income, a business needs more assets, not more sales and marketing. So if you're interested in exploring how the five step key person of influence methodology can be applied to what you do to develop the right kind of assets, then consider investing a couple of hours on a one-on-one strategy session facilitated by one of our team. It's available in the UK, USA, Singapore, and Australia. This process is guaranteed to give you a level of personalized insight and understanding of where you are in the entrepreneur journey and the specific steps you need to take to become more visible, more valuable, and more connected in your industry. Simply put, your goal is to turn your skill set and the skill set of your team or business partners into assets by identifying and unpacking the intellectual property component that's laying dominant usually between your ears and rapidly turning it into assets that drive revenue, profit, value, and growth. This has been Glenn Carlson. Thanks for listening.